If you feel like you definitely should not watch this video, even if you have a small inkling that you shouldn't, definitely skip this video. I will completely understand. Oh, wow. Influencers, celebrities, they look unreal. Whoa. Stop right there. Stop comparing yourself to someone you don't know because the struggles that a lot of us have, influencers and celebrities have in their own way, they just hide behind secrecy. Ironically, as Bridget hit rock bottom, she was more in demand as a model than ever before. Now that we've dealt with those intrusive thoughts, you stupid dinosaur, get the out of here! We have to talk about some really serious topics, but before we get into it, I just want to make it clear that this is not in any way, shape, or form intended to bash or hate on any of these influencers or celebrities who have participated in what I'm calling the thindemic. It seems like it's doing more harm than good for everyone. Chadwick Boseman, he was battling a very, very deadly disease for a very long time under wraps without letting the public know. And before he passed away tragically, he started losing a lot of weight, which unfortunately became a topic of conversation on the internet. People were bullying someone who was going through a very serious crisis and body shaming him without even knowing that he was literally dying. I am going to refrain from using specific examples of people because of that exact reason. We don't know why people are getting thin, and we can't assume either because there are so many reasons why people's weights fluctuate. This video will be specifically geared towards talking about this whole skinny aesthetic, more so the appeal of wanting and needing to be skinny by any means necessary. Some of the most popular content on the internet is about weight loss, and the amount of content that surrounds dieting and efforts to lose weight is growing exponentially. When you pull out the magnifying glass, you start to notice some things. K-pop and their harsh standards of beauty becoming popular globally. Kim and Chloe fighting to maintain the spot as the family's skinniest members. I will say that Kendall and Kylie, not that I'm trying to out them, but they did text me and say, um, that they were a little concerned for you because you're really skinny. And I said, I think she's a bit strat. And Kendall said it, the model. And every celebrity under the sun claiming that they're losing all this weight thanks to Pilates. All before and during what I am calling the skinny epidemic. Coincidence? Hmm. I think not. There is a parallel to be drawn between the people influencing and the people being influenced. The influencers are always one unrealistic step away from everybody else, and that's very intentional. Models and social media influencers are often thinner than the average population and have a lower than normal weight. There's some really, really interesting information I have found out from peer-reviewed articles about why we follow influencers to begin with, why they're so profitable, and how the newest trends always go back around full circle. The exposure to slash of idealistic representations of women's bodies in both traditional and social media was found to engender anxiety, body dissatisfaction, low self-esteem, eating and sexual disorders, and other problems. The negative effects of objectification and self-objectifying behavior are outlined by the objectification theory, which has been validated in multiple contexts. Women carefully choose the most advantageous photos of themselves, apply filters, and use retouching software to make the photography more appealing. Compared with other platforms like YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, Instagram appears to be more taxing on our brains, especially when it comes to the ways we compare ourselves to everyone while using it. The new study also found that the more time people reported spending on Instagram, the more anxious and depressed they felt. The study author, Daniel Lee Wakestaff, I am so sorry if I mispronounced that, a psychology professor at Federation University Australia, says people naturally compare themselves to others because it helps us figure out where we stand. She believes that Instagram, more so than any other platform, confuses our social comparison radar. We are constantly trying to fight, figure out if we are more or less attractive, smart, and accomplished than everybody else. And that is exactly why Instagram exists and why it is flourishing.
This video is sponsored by Self Expression. The links will be in the bio. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Boss Girlified, where we talk about social issues that usually tend to focus towards women and societal pressures and all types of standards of beauty and that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Just take a look at my page. You'll, you'll get a pretty good gist of what I do here. Today, we're going to do a little quick fit check. I'm wearing this spiral ring, this cute um beaded bracelet this pearl ring yeah yeah and then i'm wearing this cute hold on let me get closer wire wrapped crystal necklace and then my dress i don't really want to zoom out hold on hold on oh. oh how cute i thrifted it i'm not sure what brand it is but I will put it on the screen if I can find it. All the links will be in the bio down below. Dieting in the sense of a woman needing to maintain a certain shape. I would say started in the 1920s. However, I would also say that the 1990s and the Y2K era is really what propelled the skinny philosophy. Oh, um, I hate my thighs. Oh, come on. I can't even open a magazine without thinking thighs, thighs, thighs. Eating disorders in the States were at an all time high during the Y2K era. And with these overall trends making a comeback, it should come as no surprise that skinny is making to come back as well even though it technically never left except this time not only is it on social media but it comes with more deception and secrecy and although this disordered eating behavior is very obvious for the most part most of it is undetected for a very long time but you know i'm gonna get into that <laughs> we are seeing the people that our society considers the pinnacle of Western beauty standards like Kim Kardashian and the Kardashians overall start losing weight rapidly and getting procedures like the skinny or country club BBL. I think that with the rise of K-pop and an overall cultural shift, people are starting to abandon the black aesthetic, which good. We didn't want you here anyways. No, I'm kidding. Let me be nice. Let me be nice. Let, let me keep it classy. Let me keep it cute. Isn't it kind of crazy how the black aesthetic was just kind of <laughs> sucked dry to the best of the, uh, the non-black people's um, ability? And then they just crumpled it up and threw it away when they were done with it? That's, that's not crazy to y'all. Look at a few examples of people who were once blackified to fit the black aesthetic, if you will. Miley Cyrus, Ariana Grande, and Kim Kardashian. Now this is where I'm gonna have to use a few examples because I mean, they're kind of like everywhere at this point and they are influencing a lot of people and it needs to be addressed. Look at Khloe Kardashian. Like I said, it could be like a health condition. We don't, we don't know. But that girl is skinny, skinny, skinny. I have never seen that girl that skinny before. Think back to Kim purposely losing weight to fit into Marilyn Monroe's dress. Well, this is Marilyn Monroe's dress. I had this idea to, to put it on and try it on, and then so they came with uh, like armed guards and gloves, and I tried it on and it didn't fit me. And so I looked at them and I said, give me like three weeks. And I, I had to lose 16 pounds down today to, to be able to fit this. Now, of course, people are try starting to try to follow it. So today we're gonna be eating and working out just like Kim Kardashian does. People like HRH who literally sell this skinny aesthetic as a skinny lifestyle. To eat things that are as, don't start with me, low calorie as possible. Just listen to me. If you have not had a Diet Coke until you've had it the, the way I've told you to make it, okay? America is Okay? No. Don't cheat yourself. Don't lie to yourself. You're only lying to yourself, okay? You're only lying to yourself. You're not eating anymore. Just shove your mouth full of lettuce if you have to. Like, no, you shouldn't eat anything. If you don't get it, then there's, there's something to teach you. You're not gonna die, you fing cow. You're not gonna like, wake up in the morning emaciated. Skinny legends is model vibes, okay? You, okay? She low-key promotes disordered eating and it's kind of concerning that she's promoting this as a grown or more adult woman to people who are probably a lot younger and more impressionable. I have made a video about this skinny aesthetic in the past. I definitely recommend you go watch that, but 
I would say the skinny aesthetic is diet, no pun intended, ED content. From Ozempic and injections or pills that work as a sort of appetite suppressant to gastric bypass surgeries, a procedure that literally cuts your stomach by a certain amount, new weight loss methods are selling out like crazy. But the most dangerous part about it is that celebrities with access to these procedures claim that their weight loss is due to sh simple, strict diet, which does literally nothing but further damage the mental health of young and impressionable people who look up to them. And you guys, I personally know someone who has unfortunately lost their life due to complications related to the ga gastric bypass. According to this article from the Mayo Clinic, biatric surgery, specifically the gastric sleeve and the gastric bypass, are the most popular and most effective methods of, get this, treating obesity. It's, it's intended to treat obesity, not to help Kim Kardashian gain more Instagram followers. The procedure helps cause weight loss by restricting the amount of food the stomach can hold. These surgeries act as tools that help affect the patient's stomach and how they digest food with their main objective to reduce the stomach capacity, thus causing the feeling of being full after eating a small amount of food. As such, the patient will absorb fewer calories after the surgery. Since the year 2000, there has been a trend for more and more people to have the weight loss surgery. The gastric sleeve surgery is a restrictive procedure that works by shrinking the size of the stomach and slowing down the digestion of the body. If a normal stomach is able to hold about three pints of food, after the surgery it will be smaller and it may hold three to four ounces. The smaller that stomach is, the less the patient can eat and the more weight will be lost via a restrictive technique. A gastric bypass surgery is a restrictive and malabsorbent procedure that will make the patient's stomach smaller and at the same time remove or bypass part of the digestive tract, making it harder for the body to absorb calories. Although it is the best and least invasive surgery, it is notorious for its complications as we see from this passage. Many studies found that gastric bypass surgery boasted the greatest weight loss short term and long term for years and has been known as the gold standard for weight loss. However, this procedure has a higher rate of complications in the month following the surgery compared to the gastric sleeve surgery. And today, gastric sleeve surgery is outperforming gastric bypass surgery for many patients. The gastric bypass is ideal for a patient that needs to lose 130 pounds plus. So it is still kind of a drastic procedure to undergo, especially if you're already a skinny person. It's very, very telling and concerning that people who are already skinny are getting this procedure done. Ozempic. Now this is another popular weight loss method amongst celebrities. And the funny thing is, this was originally a pill intended for diabetes. Now, according to this article from the Wall Street Journal, Ozempic, which is taken by injection in thigh, stomach, or arm, was approved by the Food and Drug Administration in 2017 to help lower blood sugar in people with type 2 diabetes. One Ozempic injection pen typically lasts about a month and costs about $900 before insurance, though coverage can be hard to come by. It contains an anti-diabetic ingredient called semaglutide. Semaglutide stimulates insulin production and also targets areas of the brain that regulate late appetite, according to the FDA. The federal agency has approved semaglutide for weight loss under the brand name Wagovi. Kind of crazy, but it's sold at a higher price than its literal cousin, Ozempic. Now, Wagovi was used so people realized, hey, Ozempic can help me lose weight. And so they started using it for that. But then they stepped in and said, ah, 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 this is specifically designed for weight loss. And you can charge, we can charge a little bit more for basically the same thing. In short, they basically repackaged it as a weight loss drug and now it's selling out like crazy, which is mind blowing to me. Isn't that kind of crazy how something that was intended for diabetes because it has one simple ingredient in it that helps suppress appetite, it's going, it literally became its own. That is just, ugh, I can't. Weight loss, such a big deal in this country. I will never understand in the in a lot of places in the world, to be honest, but I will never understand it. <laughs> this is the Hollywood drug, said Patty Stanger, star and executive producer of the reality show, The Millionaire Matchmaker. 
who has also tweeted about Ozempic in an interview. It's nationwide, she said. I have friends in Miami, I have friends in New York who are doing it. Dr. Martha says the drugs are meant to be taken long term and people who have withdrawn from them may gain the weight back that they have lost. Ozempic is really hard on the stomach, said Julie Fredrickson, a startup investor who has been open about losing weight on the drug. Ms. Fredrickson, who lives in Montana, considers herself a biohacker, was first prescribed the medication in 2020 to help her shed unwanted weight she had gained as a result of other prescription drugs she takes for, medical, for a medical condition. She says she lost nearly 25 pounds in six months. Now, it is a very, very active ingredient and it works well, but it is very hard on the stomach and can cause withdrawal after you stop taking it. It's meant to be taken long term, not to, for example, fit into Marilyn Monroe's dress. These new celebrity trends, which are largely exclusive for now, are obviously trickling their way into the public, with people noticing the drastic changes to the people they look up to's figures. And with this, inevitably, the celebrities have to respond to the public's questions. The problem is that many have been caught lying before, and in many cases, there's no real way to tell if a celebrity is telling the truth about how they are losing so much weight so rapidly. Now, I completely understand why people would want to lose weight, and I'm not going to bash you for wanting to lose weight because that's literally the societal norm now. It's what everyone is telling us to do, but if you are going to do that, you definitely have to go into it with the right mindset. Now, I've noticed that society, our society wants us to take the easiest route possible in literally every and anything. And the signs of this are literally everywhere. But the focus really needs to shift from it being about looking a certain way to genuinely just being healthy and living a long healthy life that's what should be the focus we desire to be desirable in the eyes of the majority so people naturally tend to look at the ones in society deemed attractive as examples or role models so honestly the whole thing is a damn scam and i'm gonna give you guys a little bit of tough love here you're a little bit silly if you expect someone like kim kardashian or anyone to actually tell you how she's losing weight her and her whole entire family their whole brand has always been to profit off of what is an unattainable standard of beauty for most women in this country not only is there a high chance and likelihood that a lot of these celebrities and influencers are lying, deceiving, or gatekeeping, but there is evidence that shows that dieting does not work. And when it does, it only keeps off so much weight for so long. The honest, honest, honest truth is weight has to do with genetics, lifestyle, and habits. No dieting pill, no weight loss method is really worth it. I think if you really want to lose weight, you should focus on being more active, burning off the same number of calories that you consume in a day. I think that's a myth, but just doing enough physical activity, that could literally just be walking around and doing natural human things. I think the, what the problem is, in my opinion and my theory of the reason why we are seeing well, first of all, I want to touch a little bit on obesity because I think that's kind of what people are scared off by, which is why they are so extreme with these methods. I think the main reason why obesity exists in the way it does is because of a lack of education, resources, access, a lack of being the way we're supposed to be, if that makes sense. Like back in back back in the day, back in the day. I hate bringing it back in the day cuz times are obviously different. But this is a really good example of what I mean by leading a healthy lifestyle. Back then, I don't think people were working out. I mean, they might have been, you know, I'm talking about like when we were, you know, hunters and gatherers. I don't think people were working out back then. All they were doing was hunting and gathering, walking around, collecting their own food. And they didn't have access to these foods full with chemicals that it's, it's proven that they are filled with chemicals. But... They were, they, I'm pretty sure, I mean, and life expectancy was probably a lot slimmer then because of, you know, disease and they didn't have access to medication. So there's pros and cons, but the point being is that they were just being human beings. And even if obesity existed back then, I don't think it exist, existed in the way that it does today. I hate this notion that like you need to get like some surgery or you need to go do this or you need to go follow this celebrity lifestyle. Honestly, just live your own life the way you live it 
live as active as you want to and call it a damn day. Don't try to follow anyone else because you never know what goes on behind the scenes. According to this 2018 article from the National Library of Medicine, where they compare 14 popular diets for weight loss and blood pressure reduction, they found that most macronutrient diets over six months resulted in modest weight gain or modest weight loss and improved blood pressure. However, at 12 months, weight reduction diminished and blood pressure improvements largely disappeared. Basically, most diets led to weight loss and better health in the short term until the improvements returned to the original state that it was before the diets at the end of the year. As of 2022, the diet industry is worth about a whopping $58 billion. And there is ample evidence that suggests that weight loss methods are largely ineffective. Most of it is psychological and doesn't have any long lasting or permanent effects because they're selling us all the wrong thing and we are all falling for it. They also don't work because when it comes to restrictive diets, for example, you under eat, you end up binging, you deprive yourself, you end up overcompensating. It's just human okay. nature. In my opinion, our relationship to our body image should be based around just living a healthy lifestyle. Do things to live a healthy lifestyle, not to look a certain way. Overall, our society has been driven off of instant gratification, which has led people to want to see results no matter what, which wanting to seem rich, healthy, beautiful, and taking shortcuts to get there. We have become so focused on looking pretty and not only is that temporary, but that is extremely dangerous. Eating should be balanced. It's everything in life is about balance. Don't eat because it tastes good or looks good as a way to cope. And this is deeply complex, by the way. This is not to back for your own body's sake. You definitely should avoid certain foods that are just not healthy for you. But also don't eat in a way that focuses on how you look. Eat in a way that feels good to you, and that looks different for everyone. But it is just very sad that we have been conditioned that beauty only looks like this one way. If you're not this, then you're not beautiful. Because the reality is, everyone is literally born different. Everyone is born differently. That is why we all have different appearances. We should not be killing ourselves to look a certain way. For example, me, my entire life I have been extremely thin. I went through the BBL era like, ugh, this sucks. Like I was really trying to gain weight, but I just, my body isn't built that way. I would have to eat a tremendous amount of calories and really honestly harm myself to be able to get to that point where I would be able to get the BBL body. But you know what I did? I just kind of thugged it out. I am secure enough in myself, and this is not to diss anyone, because security and all that, it's a lot deeper than it seems. Um, it has a lot to do with society and what society teaches us. But I was taught the complete opposite of what society teaches us, that I'm literally beautiful naturally. Uh, and I don't need to fit it like I'm, I'm just my own human being and that is what I wish That's what I really want you guys to take away from this video is that you are your own human being with your own elements your own body composition your own everything your own Metabolism your own you're your own individual human being. I'm my own individual human being Don't ever compare yourself to anyone else because you don't know why they are the way they do the, the way they are Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really do hope you enjoyed and if you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. I really do appreciate the support and subscribe to the channel to check out all my social medias. They will be linked in the bio and I will see you guys on another video soon. The Blast Beat is signing out.